all that to your soul. Just one last time. Don't give up on God. Come on. Don't give up on God. He won't. He won't give up on you. Tell him why. He's able. If you believe he's able, you ought to bless the Lord right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab your Bible, please, your Bible app. Open with me to the book of Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 14. Thank you so much to our singers, to our band, our media teams. We give God praise for you. Indeed, we do. And we're so thankful to every person who has joined us in this cyber sanctuary. If you are a disciple, a member of the Citadel Church, or if you're one of our friends and partners, we're glad that we get to celebrate the Lord with you on today. It's a privilege. You know, over the last couple of weeks, I have had to uh, practice what I preach in a different type of way in that I've, I've literally been going back and pulling on some things that the Lord has said through me to encourage me. You know, sometimes we have to do like David and encourage ourselves in the Lord. Sometimes we put too much pressure on other people to encourage us, to keep us motivated, to keep us strong. And I believe that outside of the Lord our God, he has given not only other people to us, but he has put within us the opportunity, the privilege, the wherewithal to encourage ourselves. And so I've been doing that, and quite honestly, it has brought me to some favorite passages and some things that, that have been said before that are blessing me again in a fresh new way. And so for the remainder of the month of June, for the entirety of this month, I'm going to be preaching uh, some of my favorite texts. And we begin this morning with Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, if you'll find verse 13. And we're going to begin there. I'm reading this morning from the New Living Translation. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. If you will, look again at verse 19. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. I want to talk this morning. He broke me to bless me. He broke me to bless me. Father, we need you now. Please speak through us as your oracle. Give to me what I need as a person, not as a preacher, but as I need as a person. In the same way, I pray that you give to every person who hears, who views, who participates in this moment. Bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, I know you were already standing in your kitchen, so go ahead and be seated now. He broke me to bless me. A.W. Tozer said, deliverance can come to us only by the defeat 
of our old life. Safety and peace come only after we have been forced to our knees. God rescues us, he said, by breaking us, by shattering our strength and wiping out our resistance. I believe in whole and wholeheartedness that, that, that it is a blessing to be broken. That brokenness, honestly, we know very well, but we don't always relate or regard what God does when he allows us to be broken. Brokenness, we know, is the after effect of situations that rob us of joy, vitality, and energy. Broken is what I feel when I am depressed, dejected, devastated, and or denied. Brokenness is the lingering loneliness when the loved one passes away. It's the helplessness and hopelessness of heading in the wrong direction, and you feel as if you can't find a place to turn around. It's the deafening silence of a once laughter-filled home when the relationship is in ruins. It's the rampant rejection that floods the heart of a person who lives without any sense of desire or purpose in their life. And yet I believe that it is in this place that God, even here, can bring healing and wholeness and blessing even when we are broken. As a matter of fact, I am finding, finding out more and more that helplessness can lead to holiness. I wish you would hear me on this morning. You'll say amen in a few minutes if it's not ready for, if you're not ready just yet. I promise you, being broken, we're going to find out today, is a blessing all by itself. It's interesting to happen upon this text and to find the setting that Jesus now is trying to be alone after he has found out his cousin, John the Baptist, has been beheaded. In the verses that precede this, we find that John's life has been taken, and now when Jesus hears the news, he desires solitude. He desires a moment to think, to mourn, to recalibrate, but the crowd follows him, so he can't be alone. He realizes the extreme needs of the people and has compassion on them, according to verse 14, and begins to heal them all. It's interesting further to note in the Matthew account of this incident that we happen upon today, it's recorded that Jesus heals their sick. For the next several hours, it would appear that the setting finds Jesus spending nearly the entire day in healing ministry. Now, Mark's account shows that Jesus spent the time teaching many things. Luke's report shows him doing both. To be certain, it's important to Jesus that you are healed. I believe this text identifies at least three ways that the Lord wants to heal you. He wants to heal your illnesses and injuries. He wants to heal your inadequacies. But he also wants to heal your identity. Or maybe you'll wake up in just a moment because it's important to realize the level at which the Lord our God wants to heal you. Because even after he has healed their physical illnesses, in this span of time where he first wanted to be by himself, his compassion for the people causes him to spend his wanting to be alone time in ministry, healing the physicalities of the people who crowd him. But now... He also wants to ensure that he heals their hunger. The disciples come to him and say, Jesus, we got to let the folk go because it's getting late in the day. We need to get them to the market so that they can have time and opportunity to provide for themselves. And Jesus says, no, I'm going to feed them. It's actually their hunger, the injury that they endure while their illnesses are being dealt with. And there was really no requirement of Jesus, Alaric, to heal their, or to provide for their temporal need, to provide for their, their hunger. The people had no expectation of a meal, but the Lord refuses to send them away hungry. And I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but somebody is like me, that you're thankful that the Lord never sends you away 
hungry. Some of us don't understand that sometimes the hunger or the, the injury on the internal or in the inside is sometimes more devastating than whatever the injury may be experienced on the outside. And I believe that the hunger of the people signifies something very important to us, that Jesus is not just concerned about your condition externally, but he wants to tap into and feel the injury that's been caused that nobody else can see. So he refuses to send them away hungry. Thank God he never sends us away hungry. And so he shows even in that that he wants to heal their illnesses and their injuries. But these other two, these other two things that he wants to heal, their inadequacies and their identity, we can't, we can't observe this regularly uh, with reading the text. We actually have to talk to the bread and let the bread tell us how Jesus does this. The multitude arrives at a point of need, and it would have been enough for Jesus to have left them at their own devices. But Jesus says, in essence, to the disciples, when they come to him to tell him to leave the people, to let the people go, Jesus says, no, and the disciples, he says, you feed them. That's what he tells the disciples, you feed them. Deacon Cannon and the disciples are like, all we got is these five loaves and two fishes. That's all we got, Jesus. We, we, don't, we don't have enough to feed the people. And yet Jesus says, in verse 18, Bring them here. I don't want you to miss this. Because when Jesus asks for it, he actually suggests to them that what they have is enough. And I think that's the message that I first need to help somebody to understand. Those who may be fighting with your inadequacy, the Lord wants you to know like the fish and the bread, you are enough. Where you are is enough. What you have is enough. The way you look is enough. Your skill set is enough. And Jesus is saying, just come to me. He didn't ask you to change anything. He didn't ask you to make yourself better before you came to him. He wants you just like you are because how you are is enough. Wherever you are right now is a good enough place for the Lord to use you. Wherever you are right now is a good enough place for the Lord to make use of your life. He doesn't have to change you to use you. He doesn't have to move you to use you. He can use you on the street that you live on, in the job place that you work on, in the family that you're already in, feeling like you already feel, with your hair just like it already is. You don't have to go do anything to make yourself good enough for the Lord. He says, bring them here. Don't let anybody say you cheat. You are enough. I wish you would just type that or scream it out if you're in the sanctuary. You are enough. Watch this. Watch this. He says, bring it to me. Bring it to me. This is, this, is this is a blessing. He says, bring it to me. And Jesus takes the loaves, and now the loaves are in his hands. <sighs> Y'all ain't had no coffee this morning. Okay. Jesus says... I want you to feed them. You don't think what you have is enough, so bring it to me. And now the loaves are in his hands. Jesus, Jesus follows a process. He follows a process. And the bread says, what's wonderful is that the first thing he does is he thanks God for what I am. Are you looking at the text? <laughs> the Bible says, then... Then he told the people to sit down. He took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. In acknowledgement to what is not only about to occur, but what is about to occur is God's plan and will happen by his providence. And the bread feels like it's just good to know that the Lord not only can use me, but he can bless me like I already am. Here, here, here's something I need folk to understand, that, that, that some of us have been led to believe that God can't use us until everything about us has completely left us. But the moment he saved you, he knew he was going to have to change some stuff about you. But that didn't hold him back, cause him to hold you back from him using you. He knew he was going to have to change your vocabulary. And yet he gave you some folk who could handle the fact that you vacillate between good English and that slang you use. You go back and forth between using the words that you should and the words that you shouldn't. And yet he blesses you just like you are because you are in his hands. Is there anybody who's understanding what I'm saying? right now that the Lord is intentional about the fact that he can bless you just like you are and to every person who has lied to somebody and told them God don't bless
bless no mess. Use a lie. Use a lie. Y-O-U-S. Use a lie. Because I'm a mess and he blessed me. I wish I had another mess in this room. I wish I had another mess looking at me. Who, somebody who knew you are not all that you should be, not all that people think you are, not even all that you try to be, that some days you walk, wake up, and you've got every intention to be everything God wants you to be, and before you can get dressed and out the shower, you are already messed up your plan that you said one week you wasn't going to sin, you wasn't going to do that, you wasn't going to go there, and before Tuesday, you had gone there, and and you had said that, and you had done that. And the Lord still says, I can bless that. People don't think you are enough, but the Lord says, if you're in my hands, I can bless it. Somebody shout, he can bless it. Okay, let me, let me, let me see. Let me see what the bread has to say. Bread, bread, holler at us, please. I need these loaves to talk back to me. What, what else does Jesus do? He doesn't, just, he doesn't just look up, but he blesses it. And, 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 and he blesses it. Because he knows that the breaking is coming next. <sighs> the, breaking, the breaking is coming next, but, but he makes sure that he blesses me before he breaks me. Because now whatever happens in the breaking is subject to the blessing that precedes it. Y'all don't want to have church with me this morning. Understand something now. Because the blessing comes first, it says the blessing is the priority. In other words, I can never be broken beyond the level of blessing that God has already put on me before he broke me. Y'all don't want to help me on this morning because, see, you're still trying to figure out why God let you go through what you went through. You're trying to figure out why God let them do you like that and why God let you lose your job and why God let you deal with that sickness. And what you haven't realized is that before he broke you, he blessed you. And that whatever is breaking you can't outdo the blessing that's already on your life. So no matter how broken you are, your brokenness can't go beyond your blessing because your blessedness is the priority. I wish I had somebody who feels like I feel, who understands that God breaking me can't go beyond the place of blessing that he has given to my life. Somebody shout, he broke me. He broke me. He broke me. Bread, did it hurt? Yes, it hurt. Did it feel good? No, it didn't feel good. And if it wasn't for the fact that he had already blessed me, I might have jumped out his hands. Oh, some of y'all can relate to the bread. You know you wanted to jump out of God's hands. You didn't want to, Channing, deal with the fact that God was letting certain things happen in your life. You didn't want to deal with the fact that God was allowing you to go through what you were going through, lose the money that you had saved up, deal with situation after situation after situation after situation. You didn't like the fact that God let that happen. As a matter of fact, you thought that you had passed that test. You thought that you had exceeded that level. You thought you would never again have to deal with heartbreak, never again have have to deal with not enough finances, never again have to deal with your body being racked with pain, and yet here you are again, and you're trying to figure out why it is that God lets you go through what he would, what is letting you go through, but understand now that not only has he broken you, but he broke you while you were in his hand. It's the place where the bread started us, and so now he brings us back to it because I told you that, that when the other folk didn't think I was enough, Jesus said, come here, bring it to me, and now I'm in Jesus' hands, and he, after he blesses me, he breaks me, but he doesn't let other people break me. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was in his hands that I was broken because if I have to be broken, if I got to go through something, let me go through something while I'm in his hands. Don't give me to other folk because they won't know how to handle me. Don't leave me alone and expect for me to break myself. If I've got to be broken, then the safest place to be broken is in the hands of the Lord. I don't know who I'm hollering at this morning, but is there anybody that understands what it's like to go through but know that going through is okay because the Lord is going through with you because just like the three Hebrew boys, he's standing there in the fire with you like Daniel posted up in the den of lions with you that God will not let you go through anything that he doesn't walk through with you yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death but I fear no evil cause thou art with me somebody shout I'm in his hands I'm in his hands and if I'm in his hands it means can't nobody else touch me 
If I'm in his hands, it means nobody else has got rule and reign over me. If I'm in his hands, it means nobody else can break me. Because understand something, there are some people who want to get their hands on you, but God won't even let them do what they want to do to you, even when what they want to do needs to be done. God knows you need to get your attitude right. He knows you need to be broken. He knows your character needs to be fixed. But I'm so glad he won't put me in nobody else's hands so that he, God can be broken. He breaks me in his hands. Somebody ought to shout, I'm in his hands. I almost feel like preaching here. Understand something right now. That the breaking is not for the people. Elder Red, Elder Red, I don't know if they're going to appreciate this. But understand something. Because the people are hungry, but the breaking is not for them. The people are hungry. They don't think that the bread is enough. But God is not doing what he's doing just for the people. The breaking is not just for the people. God breaks you to make you more. <sighs> if the breaking, if the breaking were just for the people, there wouldn't have been anything left over. I wish... I wish I had a whole church. I do. I wish I, wish I had a whole church. If, listen, listen. If, 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 if the breaking of the bread was just for the hungry people, there wouldn't have been that much more left over after the people had their fill. So now, now, bread, you got to help me. You got to help me. Why would you think then that God sees such a necessity? He says, because God knew that breaking me was the only way he could increase me and maximize me. That if God had not broken me, I could not be multiplied. If God had not broken me, I couldn't have reached my full potential. If God had not broken me, let me go through what I went through, that I wouldn't have been as valuable as I am right now. I'll leave you alone. Y'all tired of me. Obviously, you're ready. you ready to get out of here. So let me just tell you this. In the Japanese tradition, there's a term, a ph philosophy called kintsugi. Kintsugi means broken things are repaired. And broken things are not just repaired, but when something is cracked, particularly a vessel of clay, it's repaired with gold or silver. <laughs> so that the repaired object is more lovely than the original. I feel like running right now. <laughs> and so and so and so now the break becomes a part of what makes you more valuable because they didn't want to see anything broken be disguised. Nothing broken needed to be hidden because just because you're broken does not mean you're not usable. Who am I talking to? But so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to repair you, but I'm going to repair you with something more valuable than what you were starting with in the first place. I don't know who I came to holler at this morning, but the Lord wants me to tell you, don't you despise your going down. Don't you despise your breaking because all I'm doing is using this as an opportunity to make you more valuable. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to increase who you are. Your value just went up because of what you went through. I wish you'd give your family member a high five. If you're in the sanctuary, just wave at somebody and tell them God is making you more valuable. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me talk to the folk over 40. Let me talk to the folk over 40. If you're under 40, you're going to need Google for this one. But let me talk to the folk over 40. There was a TV show I used to watch as a kid. It was called The Six Million Dollar Man. <laughs> Y'all don't, don't know nothing about The Six Million Dollar Man, do you? Okay, so, so, so what happens, what happens, what happened, there was a dude named Steve Austin, he was, a, he was an astronaut, and uh, Steve Austin got seriously injured when his spaceship crashed. He's a handsome and athletic guy, and so in order to save him, he's got too much in him for them to just let him die, he undergoes a government-sanctioned surgery. And it rebuilds several of Steve's body parts with machine parts. And it makes him cyborg-like. Y'all don't remember this, do you? Uh, uh, Daddy, you know this. When Steve recovers... His machine parts enable him to have strength he didn't have before he was broken. <laughs> before he was broken, he wasn't worth six million. 
Before, before he was broken, he couldn't jump like he could jump after the fact. Y'all ain't hearing me. Before he was broken, he couldn't do what he could do after the fact. But because he was broken, God repaired him and made him better. I don't know who this message is for, but I'm just glad that I was broken. Because when God broke me, when he allowed me to go through, can I just holler for a few minutes? I know y'all don't need this. This is just for Terry Jr. But when God let me go through what I went through, it was so he could make more out of my life. Have I got one witness? I wish I had somebody in here who would shout, he's making me better. Because God knew I was always worthy. He knew I was always valuable. He knew I was always enough. But you would not have known it if I had not been broken. You wouldn't have seen my worth if I had not been broken. So the bread came to tell us this morning, if anybody's got bragging rights, it's the one who's been broken. It's the one who's gone down and found a way to get back up. I'm going to leave you alone after this. At the beginning of the story, it wasn't just the bread, but the bread was accompanied by fish. And I know we forgot about the fish because when you read the other accounts, the emphasis stays on the broken bread, but the fish get passed out too. And even though we ain't talked about the fish, even though the Lord just handles the bread, even though it's just the bread that gets broken, it's enough fish to go around for everybody. And I started scratching my head last night because I could not figure out how just the bread could be broken and then even the fish get blessed. Well, the Lord told me this morning, the bread knew that when he got broken, Everything in that combo is going to get multiplied. I hear Ja'Kalen call now. Everything attached to me wins. And so you ought to be glad that you're connected to somebody who God is breaking. You should be glad that you got somebody who's in the hands of the Lord. Have I got one witness? Is there anybody in here that can say I'm glad that I've been broken because I was broken? My wife got blessed because I was broken. My children got blessed because I was broken. The whole church got blessed. Is there anybody in here that does not mind going through what you got to go through? So God could get the glory. You want a shouty ass, shouty ass, shouty ass. Because when you go through what you got to go through, you're going to be better than you are right now. You want to shout at your neighbor. Give your family a high five and tell them I feel like he's making me better. I feel like he's increasing my value. Somebody shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. And when I come out of the mess that I'm in, I know that everybody is going to want to tell the story. They're going to want to know how it is that I made it through the divorce, how it is that I made it through bankruptcy, how it is that I made it through that sickness i'll be happy to tell you because while he was breaking me he kept me in his hands is there anybody here that's glad that while you're being broken the lord's got you in his hands shouty ass shouty ass what is it that i want you to know if you leave here this morning you got to remember one thing. If you're going to be broken, you're in good hands. Not with all state, but you're in good hands. If the Lord's got you, shout yes. 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 Shout yes. Nobody but you, Lord could have kept me nobody but the Lord could have held me nobody but the Lord
could have done what he did. And I don't know about y'all, but I thank God for my mountains. I thank him for my valleys. I thank him for my sickness and everything that I've been through. Because if I never had a problem, I would not know that God could solve them. I would not know what faith in him would do. Because through it all, I ain't got no happy people. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Somebody help me here. I've learned to trust in God. I don't know about nobody else, but I dare you to make your living room a praise place and just take him. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless you, Jesus. Oh, bless you, Jesus. He's allowing us to be made better because of the very thing that you're fussing about, complaining about. I, I understand the Apostle Paul a little better now. Paul said, I was asking God, to take this thing away. It was a problem to me. And he didn't change it until he changed me. Because me going through it made me better. And I don't know, I don't know who needs to hear it this morning. But if he's broken you, he broke you to bless you. You would never have been what you are right now if you had not been through what you've gone through. And that's a reason to bless him. It is. It's a reason to bless him. It's a reason to bless him. To be thankful that he loved you enough to break you. He wouldn't let you stay at the level you were in. He let that thing hurt you and depress you. But he did it. He allowed it. While you were in his hands. Aren't you glad he didn't leave it to anybody else? To break you, he didn't leave it to anybody else. And so, mama, the children, the children are blessed because the Lord broke you. Daddy, the whole house is blessed because the Lord broke you. It is, it is, I'm done. It's, it's, the, it's the understanding that, that at every point in the year, Areas that have too much foliage, too many trees, in order to ensure that a wildfire doesn't take it, they start a controlled fire. In order so a wildfire doesn't damage, they, they start intentionally a controlled fire so that they can clear out in order to protect. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm so glad the Lord wouldn't let a wildfire take me out. No. He let me be exactly what he wanted me to be. And while no one was looking, he was, he was burning off stuff. Oh, God. 
so that it wouldn't be a problem when he put me back on the shelf. The Lord wants, the Lord wants, the Lord wants to break you, to bless you. And I believe that's his intention this morning. Not only is it his intention, I believe it's his desire for your life to break you right. He wants to break you right so that you can experience and enjoy the blessing that comes from your increased value. Don't worry about the chips and the cracks of your life. It's the chips and the cracks that make you valuable. The Lord is desiring. I told you at the beginning, he wants to heal your illnesses. And it's funny, we trust him to do that. But he also wants to heal your inadequacies. He wants you to know you're enough. You're enough. But he also wants to heal your identity. The breaks make you better. The breaks make you better. And that's how he does it. This morning, I believe the Lord wants to heal somebody. And I'm going to challenge you. I am. I'm going to challenge you. Because I believe you're in a situation now that's already breaking you, maybe. And you didn't know, you didn't remember that you were still in his hands. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to take the posture of the broken. I want you to kneel right where you are. I don't care, I don't care if you're in this room. Just, just to those who know he's breaking you to bless you, I want you to take the posture of the broken. Take the posture right there in your living room. Turn, turn the pot down and, and, and walk into the bedroom for a moment and take the posture. The posture of brokenness. Brokenness that leads to holiness. Brokenness that leads to increased value. And while you're there, thank him first that you're in his hands. Would you thank him for that? Thank him that he took control of the situation by putting you in his hands. And because you're in his hands, you can receive the breaking that will bless you. I want you to receive that this morning. I want you to receive the blessing of God over your life that declares this break won't kill you. It's going to make you better. This fire won't burn you. It's going to make you better. Would you receive that blessing? Yeah. Father, we're here. Broken. We're here. Right in your hands. And we need you, dear Lord to make us better doing us what we can't do for ourselves bring us to the place where your glory is all that's seen in the name of Jesus someone is on their knees right now and the brokenness the breaking that you're experiencing is bringing you to a place of repentance a place of restoration if I'm talking to you and you know you need to return to the Lord, take the moment now. You're already in the posture of brokenness. And here, receive rather the Lord's invitation to be the Lord of your life, to be in relationship with you. You don't need a special script, any words from me. Just ask the Lord to put you back in his hands. Ask him to be the Lord of your life. Maybe you're here and in that posture of brokenness, you know you need to be reconnected with a church home. You need a family, a faith family that helps you to be who God wants you to be. 
and you believe in this moment that the Citadel Church is that place for you, I want you, when you get off of your knees, I want you to send us an email to citadelchurchjacks at yahoo.com and let us know that you have received the Lord, that you have a desire to align yourself with this ministry, and we will celebrate the great thing that God is doing in you. Now, as you rise to your feet, I want you to know that the Lord has made you better. He really has, and you can celebrate that. Why don't you just take a second and just give God praise for the better that he has made you because of your brokenness. You want to lift your hands, lift your voice, and give the Lord great praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. Now listen, listen, listen. I want you to go away from this moment of worship and fellowship together, knowing that God believes you are enough. And it's only up from here. It's only up from here. And so now I want to speak God's blessings over your life. I want to ensure that you know that you are covered. And I declare to you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and to be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace, each and every one of you, in Jesus' name, amen. We love you. Have an amazing week. We'll see you on Tuesday night right here in worship. God bless you.